everyone, and welcome to the next edition of the Holland Land Office Museum's Artifact Video Series. My name is Ryan Duffy, I'm the director of the museum, and this week we're going to talk about one of the interesting sites in Genesee County, the Morganville Pottery Site. Uh, now Morganville, for those of you who don't know, is a small hamlet in the town of Stafford in Genesee County, and this uh, pottery site is one of the more well-known parts of Morganville. Um, the history of the pottery site goes back to about 1827 to 1829, when a man by the name of Fortunatus Gleason Jr. came to Stafford from Westmoreland, New Hampshire with his brother Lionel. And in Morganville, they opened up a pottery and a trip hammer shop. Now, the site that we know is the Morganville Pottery Site, uh, there is evidence that a pottery was started there at earliest 1835. So the Gleasons eventually made it to that spot to open up their pottery factory. Um, however, there is varying degrees of evidence of when the two brothers actually became involved in the pottery business at that site. Uh, there isn't any evidence of Fortunatus uh, being involved before 1850, uh, but his brother Lyman, there is evidence before 1846. Now that's important because about that time is when Fortunatus' son Charles actually gets involved in the business and takes it over. Uh, in 1845, he purchases the land of the pottery site from his uncle Wilson and begins to expand the business uh, and specifically focuses on brown earthenware as his first contract with the property uh, in order to pay off the installments was he was supposed to make high quality brown earthenware. Now this slightly changed as things went along as he began using the local clay which um, was better suited to making red earthenware, though you're just going off a little bit in coloration. Um, but uh, Morganville pottery became very well known for its red earthenware uh, material. Now Gleason would take that uh, redware, as it was known, and make it into many different uh, items uh, for the everyday home of the time. It included pots, crocks, jars, bottles, all sorts of different materials that were meant to hold liquids. Uh, now, in order to make the earthenware watertight, it was actually treated with a lead-based uh, glaze. Uh, and this made it waterproof, which was great for uh, holding things, uh, food and water and other liquids, but uh, could also be very dangerous to both the worker and to the person who bought it and handled it. Uh, for instance, if any of the foods or other items had a high acidity level, the lead could actually leach into the food and cause lead poisoning, essentially, and cause other sicknesses to those who ate the contents of these jars. But these were sort of the standards of the day, and I guess the, <laughs> the hazards of owning uh, these redware jars. Now, redware was actually fired at a lower temperature than the popular gray stoneware that you also see. Uh, it was fired about 1700 degrees in a really large kiln, um, which actually there is a direct replica uh, that uh, is still used at uh, Genesee Country Village. Uh, it's based on the kiln that was at Morganville Pottery. The kiln at Morganville would describe this way. It was 8 or 10 feet in diameter and high enough for a person to stand up in it. Hardwood was burned for fuel to provide heat for firing the ware. At one time, wood from the old Norris nursery near the original clay source was used. The kiln fire was started in the middle of the afternoon and kept burning for about 30 hours. Morganville pottery was unique in its style, their clay lids, which extended over the top to prevent dirt from collecting around the lid and causing contamination. Uh, but their uh, line of pottery did not include just jugs and crocks, milk pans and pitchers. It had colanders and bottles were even manufactured. The milk pans uh, specifically were kind of ingenious as they did, were designed to allow cream to rise to the top in order for it to be skimmed off and churned into butter. And they had specific clients that often uh, preferred their wares. Uh, one particular druggist in Batavia, Mr. S. Dustin, uh, sought out them for their bottles. Uh, on top of that, they also created spittoons and chamber pots, uh, but uh, their popularity uh, changed somewhat uh, after the Erie Canal came through and allowed uh, a lot of other goods to be shipped through the area. 
uh, and gray stoneware became more available uh, as it could be shipped through Rochester. And this allowed it to become much more popular uh, as it was treated with a salt glaze and not lead and thusly not poisonous to uh, those who ate or drank the contents of certain uh, um, food and drink items. Uh, so Morganville changed, uh, changed their direction a little bit and like many others, and they switched to products like flower pots and field drain tiles, ones that wouldn't deal with anything really acidic and thus the lead would not really leach into anything. Um, and it operated in this capacity until about 1900. So in total the history, we're looking at about 70 years of operation in one way or another, uh, which is a pretty amazing feat. But the story of the Morganville site doesn't end there, as in 1973 a dig was held by the Royal Ontario Museum and Rochester Museum of Science, which recovered a lot of remnants uh, and other pieces of pottery uh, that were put on display and very similar to the ones that I've shown you here today. Um, these were not taken from that dig, but were taken um, from other individuals doing their digs uh, of the site and finding some very interesting items. Um, we have some uh, pot remnants, um, even an iron spike in one of their famous lids in the previous shot, um, and also in the previous shot, uh, some uh, clay marbles, essentially, that were used for various games. Um, so we're very happy that we have some of these pieces on display because Morganville pottery is very rare and, and uh, hard to come by. So even just having some fragments is a, a very exciting thing, and we're able to show off uh, another side of Genesee County history, uh, an artistic and uh, an industrial side, all in one. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this edition of the Artifact video series and got to know a little bit more about the Morganville Pottery site. Uh, so if you would like to come and see these pieces, please stop down the museum and take a look. They're quite interesting. Uh, and if you uh, happen to miss any of our previous videos, they're up on our, channel, our YouTube channel, Holland Land Office Museum. So feel free to check those out, and we'll be continuing to put out one of these every week. So I hope you uh, come by and uh, stick with us through it and check out all the other interesting things that we have here at the museum.